Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're going to be looking at Tundra 9's Quop gameplay. This is Queen of Pain, and going the Kaya Sanj build. This is the build I hacked up yesterday in my top 5 builds to go, and I thought I'd make a full replay analysis because this might be the best build on the list. Quop currently is a first phase pick ban hero. It's incredibly popular in the pro scene, and I think it's just as good in pubs so let me show you how to play it by the way guys if you want to become absolutely broken well what you need to do is sign up to the game leap website down below right now the reason why you should do that is because every single day we post a new video there content that you simply just will never get on youtube we post every single day to the website it's really top tier stuff i'm very proud of what i make over there we also have other creators many of my great friends who are top tier dota players creating guides about different heroes different roles different items skill builds talent builds everything you need to know to get to the next rank so if you feel a little bit lost you're a little bit stuck click the link down below i'll see you guys there and now let's get into the video so in the landing stage your skill build really depends on the matchup i only recommend taking dagger against heroes like ember void spirit dk the melee heroes that you can easily dagger Kunkka. Other than that, I think Scream of Pain is a much better ability for the laning stage. You should use it to secure range creeps, shove in the lane, and so on. However, you can see against a melee hero like DK, Nine is putting a huge emphasis on putting pressure and spamming the dagger, and you can do the same. One thing to note is that Nine is almost completely out of mana. In fact, he's basically completely out of mana at the three minute mark. This is something you guys should consider because a lot of the time people just undercast spells on a hero like Quop because they're so focused on getting off, you know, a good dagger that they never use Scream of Pain for creeps. He's 15 and 3 right now on the CS charts. He's beating the DK slightly, and that's good, because generally DK actually does quite well against Quop when it comes to last hitting due to Dragon's Breath. Next, one thing to understand about Quop's dagger is it heals now. A lot of people don't know that. It was a change fairly recently. It heals. Every single time it ticks it heals. Now the biggest thing to understand about Quop is her level 3 spike. When Dagger hits level 3, the ability naturally doubles <laughs> in everything. It doubles in initial damage, damage per tick, almost movement speed slow, and heal. So when you hit level 3, make sure you spam your Dagger as much as humanly possible. Next up, let's get into item build. So you're going to see he goes for a very heavy stat build, and this is for a very simple but important reason. You want to play this hero primarily around winning mid and shoving in the mid lane. You'll see here he's even comfortable blinking on the DK, throwing out a dagger, throwing out a scream, and harassing him. And that's because he knows he has a full bottle, eventually will have bottle charges from bounty runes, his teammates can TP mid, he's got two nulls, a raindrop, he's got everything you want, like literally. You know, he's got everything you could possibly want. And the main gist of this hero is to get very high CS, shove out the mid lane, shove the small camp. Then you can eventually TP if the enemy team overextends. Boom. What do we see here? Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of this TP. I don't even know if this works out. Looks like he's just going to go for a Blink's Sonic way of play, clean up the kill. But be very careful about TPing on this low of mana. Reason being is when the gank ends, you're going to be low on resources. But either way, he'll probably just commit for the Sand King. We'll see if he gets him. Oh, Sand King actually saw it coming. Stayed in the sandstorm. Damn. Great play by the Sand King. Collapse God. But after that, he's going to go back mid. And this is what you should do every single time. Okay? Like, I didn't even script that portion of the video at all. And I knew what was going to happen. Because you'll see this all the time from pros. And what the average pub player does wrong is they get stuck in the lanes too much. And they rotate just randomly. Don't make your rotations random. Make sure the enemy team is committing on one of your teammates, right? Make sure the enemy team is, is diving or taking a fight because when they're doing that, they don't, you know, even pros won't have the awareness to say, oh, Quop's going to TP most of the time. Sometimes they do. Uh, the Sand King sort of did there, but hopefully that makes sense. Those are the best plays for Quop and she's really good at, you know, counter initiating. Now, next, when your ulti is down, you want to spend almost the entirety of your game pushing in mid and farming the camps. I'm sort of repeating myself, but frankly, just get this down. You're going to notice what he does here is he's going to shove out the mid lane and then look to take the small camp. Yep, there you go. Shove out mid lane, shove out small camp. And that's where your skill build should be only two points in dagger. You might be like, oh, speed, should I max out dagger in favorable matchups? I would say you could put three points if you're really dominating your lane and you think you can go crazy. But for the most part, the safest build is the level two dagger. That's when it really spikes. And then the scream is the best for farming. However, you notice when he gets his ulti back up, what do we see? an instant smoke up, immediately going to the bottom side of the map, looking to make a play. And this is really nice, right? Very pattern based gameplay, exactly what I love to see. Goes in, blinks, trying to position for a, for a two-man ulti there, couldn't get it. 
So a bit of an unfortunate gank, definitely not exactly what you'd want to see from the co-op gank, uh, but once again, right idea. And in this clip here, you're going to see nine chases, and this is the power of this early game co-op build with raindrops, two gnolls, a wand, and hopefully some sort of neutral item. Personally, I think one of the best ones you can get is Ocean Heart, gives you nice stats, good uh, combination of tankiness and mana regen, which is fantastic. But as you see here, he goes in, right, blinks in, gets initiated on. You need to be careful about, like, blinking into the middle of the heroes. That's generally horrible, unless, like, your team's already going. But he specifically has Abaddon behind him, which he's calculating. Like, these players, you know, they're able to do that type of thing. So he's able to tank that, gets through the sinking ulti, gets his raindrop up again, gets the dagger off, kites out the fight, and wins it. And comically enough, the game ends up being, like, really simple at this point. Like, just notice how pattern-based the game is. However, th this is good gameplay. Once the laning stage kind of devolves, the, the DK took his mid-tower, now you're going to look to play side lanes. You still can push out mid if your teammates aren't doing it, but Quap is very good at shoving the side lanes. She's very mobile, she has, you know, decent wave clear. Not great, but decent wave clear, and can shove at the side lanes very consistently. One more thing to note about Nine's gameplay is that he actually skips his level 10 talent until level 13. Which is kind of weird to me, considering I really like this 11 strength talent, but he must feel like it's just not worth it over getting out the blink maxed out. Which kind of makes sense, considering the majority of your gameplay is going to be splitting up the map. I don't mean taking towers, I just mean splitting up the map in terms of shoving in the mid wave, and then being able to quickly get to bottom to maybe make a play bottom, or just shove in the bottom wave. And as you can see, you know, he pushed out mid, goes to the top lane, shoves out the top lane, farms up his Kai Assange, and this is when you have, have this like crazy timing on Quap where you have your level 11 strength talent, level 10, you have a Kai Assange, right? So you have 22% uh, status resist and 1800 HP, as well as a raindrops and wand. And so you essentially have like effectively 2300 HP, you know, if not more from something like an Abaddon, and you can really just kite in and out of fights very, very well. So next up, I know a lot of people are going to get this wrong and basically refuse to do this, but please go BKB after Kai Assange. I mentioned in the, in the build video, <laughs> but I know you fools, you're not going to be broken. I know I know what you guys are going to do. You're going to be like, well, speed, I'm snowballing. I'm just going to buy a Deso or like some stupid ass item that doesn't give you any survivability. Just buy a BKB, all right? Just buy a BKB. You're going to do a lot of damage. Trust me, you have a 30 attack speed talent, right? You have an ultimate that does a ton of pure damage in an AoE. Screams a low cooldown. <laughs> Just please play around staying alive. Look at the enemy team. They have a ton of magical damage. Yes, they have a PA, which sucks. It's definitely a bit of a weird matchup for Quap, considering PA can burst through you. Your armor's pretty low, but overall, you just want to be tanky. On top of that, you're going to notice immediately after his BKB, he's going to pick up his shard, which if you don't know what Quap's shard does, it releases a boom when you blink at the start and finish of the blink that deals 175 damage in an AoE and silences for about two seconds, which is really, really strong because it lets you initiate on a hero like Bane. You don't have to insta pop your BKB and you can essentially burst them and disable them very well. You can even cancel things like grip, epicenter, uh, so many abilities. It, it's pretty nuts what you can do with this, with this shard. On top of that, it also lets you one shot waves. All right, now you're going to see a really good example of how good this build is. Basically, his whole team is dead, and yet they still make a play. They jump the PA, they buy back on the Nyx, they're able to kill off the PA, and you can see he can confidently blink in here just because of his items, right? He even has another shawl, kind of just doubling down on this magical damage, right? Uh, but as the fight breaks out, waits for the Inks to end, goes in, daggers up the Sand King, use the blink, double silence, good damage onto the Sand King, scream to finish him off. Kites out, daggers, and keep in mind this dagger is going to consistently heal you. So the more daggers you get out, the better. Then he realizes, eh, I can't really kill this DK. But he will actually silence him again with this blink when he blinks out. And he looks through the backline, which Quap is very good at jumping the backline with this build. He's able to finish off the Grim Stroke and continue to kite, kite, kite. Obviously, DK has a BKB, but another blink to the backline. Nine is just a menace to these supports, and you should be in your pubs as well. Now, keep in mind, I don't want you guys to look at that clip and think to yourself, Oh, I'm just gonna blink to the backline at the start of every fight. No, you don't necessarily want to do that. Remember, you don't have a lot of armor, so a lot of physical damage heroes like Sven and PA can kill you very easily. But when the fight is already developed and all the attention is on the middle of the fight and not the backline, that's when you jump. Also, quick clip here showing off the shard and why it's really good for clearing waves because it has two ticks of damage, right? Uh, it's like Meepo Poof, right? It does damage at the start, 
and at the end of the blink. And so here you're gonna notice he's gonna blink in place and then scream and it insta kills waves. Then insta killing waves is a great way to flash farm. It's also kind of just the best way to stay safe when split pushing because the less time you have to show, the better. And you'll notice he's also gonna take the 120 scream of pain damage. This is so you can blink on waves without having to like blink in place. You can blink on waves and one shot the waves as well. You can see a huge priority on just shoving out waves. And that's what this build does best because you're ridiculously tanky. He's even going a Lincoln's next. You can see completely doubling down on the idea of just getting in these waves and, and farming it up. And you scale incredibly well, as well as doing just a lot of damage in fights purely just through your damage. But oh, the Age of Steel. Let's take a look at this. So, team fight breaks out. Let's watch the execution. Primarily just looking to steal Aegis here, obviously. Ulti does a lot of damage to Roche, so he steals that up. Gets the kill onto the uh, onto the PA, jumps the backline, huge silence on the three heroes. My god, the disruption coming out. And you can see they don't want to go on him. I mean, even if he didn't have Aegis, they still wouldn't want to go on him. Just terrorizing the backline, and they win the fight. I also love Thunder's draft because I think Doom and Razor are nice heroes that can follow up the Quap. Uh, they're pretty high DPS tanky heroes, and this like triple tanky high DPS core lineup is really nice. So I, I really like Thunder's draft. They're also making good plays, to be honest. <laughs> One more thing to consider as we watch him jump onto the high ground here is you can use your ulti to protect yourself. I think it's an important tip because a lot of people who play co-op will just forget about this. It's going to happen all the time where you blink in, you blink too far, and you're like, oh shoot, I need to protect myself. The ulti pushes people back, right? And so against the PA here, you can ulti him. And it completely prevents PA from hitting her. It's a really far distance. Like, it, it, you think it's like a little bit? No, if they're close to you, it just shoves them back like across the map. I mean, my God. <laughs> it unironically shoves the PA super far back, cleans him up. He's still alive, right? Even if he didn't have Aegis, he would still be alive. Looking to jump the back line. Two-man silence there. And... Oh my god, like, look, it's it's ridiculous. Obviously, you wouldn't have gone back in without the Aegis, but the survivability you have on this hero is insane. On top of that, one of the most ridiculous aspects of Quop is the late game double Lincolns. It's it's just it's just stupid. <laughs> the enemy team is mostly single target spells, right? Sanking stun, Grim Bug, DK stun, both of PA spells, Nightmare, Grip. He has two Lincolns now. Two. Right? Because your level 25 talent gives you another Lincolns. Now, obviously, if they don't have like a bunch of single target spells that threaten you and you're dying to black hole, you should take blink cooldown. But in general, man, this timing is insane. Uh, you just ruin backlines. And just to show how confident he is at this point, I mean, now he has 38 armor, 3100 HP, and a cloak of flames, which is kind of funny. <laughs> he really wants to just get on top of people and play that way but look at this damage onto the grimstroke my god look at this oh god just annihilates him to be fair he does have a dd but holy the damage the output blinks completely to the backline here no vision to be fair he does have an abaddon and two lincolns so the odds he's gonna die are pretty low and as we'll see again here goes to the backline finishes off the pa with a huge ulti bane can do nothing and he continues to dive, unsurprisingly. Really nice. All right, and that's going to be about all for today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching 9. Look how much damage she does to the to the PA here. This is insane. I mean, it does have a Bloodthorn, but look at this. This is a PA. Like, the PA naturally is actually generally decent against Quap, in my opinion. But, ugh, just stands no chance. Literally stands no chance. Just gets completely bursted. So yeah, that's the value of this build. You're tanky, you push in waves, you farm, you fight. It's just a ridiculously well-rounded build. You could unironically first pick Quap in your pubs, and if you're losing, it's your fault. <laughs> Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and I'm out. Peace! And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace!